My name is Joshua Peterson. I'm professor and chairman of the Department of Neurosurgery at the Mount Sinai Health System. Well, what is a skull-based tumor and what is skull-based surgery? The skull base refers to a place uh, in the head that is the interface between the bottom of the brain and the inner surface of the skull. Uh, this is a skull, not a real skull, a plastic skull. Uh, and you can see <clears throat> that the whole base here is where the brain rests. And there are a large number of tumors of different varieties that arise in and around the skull base. One of the reasons it can be difficult to remove a tumor from this area is that many of the cranial nerves and blood vessels run along the base of the skull, kind of like the roots of a tree. Uh, so getting to and removing tumors from this area can be a little tricky. Uh, it's a little different when the tumor is up on the top or the side, which we call the convexity, uh, because you're way out uh, in the periphery and it's a little easier to get to those tumors. So skull-based surgery involves techniques designed to reduce the amount of surgery, to reduce any brain retraction that might be needed, and to eliminate damage to any of those vital structures like cranial nerves and blood vessels running along the skull base that you have to deal with in trying to remove a tumor or treating a condition that involves the skull base. There are a number of conditions that can be treated with skull-based surgery. Certainly skull-based tumors are among the most important. And those tumors include things like meningiomas, acoustic neuromas, uh, craniopharyngiomas, uh, pituitary adenomas also require a skull-based approach. Virtually any tumor that arises in the brain can involve the skull base. And so it's not so much the tissue type of the tumor as the location that determines when skull-based surgery and a skull-based approach is going to be used. There are other conditions that are not tumors, such as trigeminal neuralgia uh, and certain infections, inflammatory conditions, leakage of spinal fluid, and other conditions like Chiari malformations and even some arthritic conditions that are treated with skull-based approaches uh, very effectively. Skull-based surgery evolved over the past several decades and began as a fairly invasive method of removing bone and soft tissue as a way of preserving brain function. It used to be that to get to a tumor or lesion at the skull base, you'd have to retract the brain upward, which could cause damage to brain structures. Over the years, new techniques evolved in which we were able to remove bone and muscle in ways that did not require brain retraction, but those were not minimally invasive surgeries. More recently, we've refined these techniques so that without retracting the brain, we can gain access through narrow corridors within the skull base that don't require significant removal of bone or manipulation of other soft tissues. We follow very narrow corridors between the cranial nerves and blood vessels so that most of skull-based surgery these days would be considered minimally invasive. Skull-based surgery can be considered complex. Of course, anything that you don't do frequently can seem complex. But with the advent of new technologies like navigation, simulation, heads-up display, augmented reality, and virtual reality, as well as our accumulated experience over years, what once was considered complex is now almost straightforward and fairly routine that we do on a literally daily basis. Skull-based surgery involves many teams at times. Our most common colleagues in the skull base are the ear, nose, and throat surgeons who with their expertise in transnasal, transoral, and other endoscopic techniques can help us provide minimally invasive access and also deal with a number of skull base conditions independently. Likewise, head and neck and cancer surgeons frequently work with us to gain access or to assist 
or for us to assist them in the removal of tumors and malignancies involving the skull base. We also work with many other teams such as plastic surgery, ocular and oculoplastic surgery, neuroradiology, radiation oncology, uh, neuroophthalmology, rehab, the vascular team, uh, the cerebrovascular team to do embolizations and so on. 